Jesus. What for your heart to tell yourself, Jesus? Somebody call Jesus. give you thanks for all that you've done. It may not have been anything great or anything so miraculous, but I just thank you for waking me up this morning for the use and activity of my limbs. And for that, I give you thanks. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, dear God, for being the almighty and the all-knowing God. We thank you, Lord God, because it's once again that you allow the death angel to pass over. Lord God, we thank you because you allowed us to rise on this morning. Oh God, and for that, we give you praise. Realizing, oh God, that had Satan had his way, our beds would have become our cooling board. But because you saw the blood of Jesus over the doorposts, the death angel had to pass by. And God, for that, we say thank you. Lord God, we come into your house to give your name praise and to give your name glory and honor. Lord God, we ask on this morning that you trouble the waters. Oh God, there are those that stand in need of healing. There are those, oh God, that stand in need of deliverance. Lord God, there are those that stand in need of freedom, oh God. They're oppressed by the bounds of Satan. But God, you trouble the waters on this morning. Oh God, turn over the tables of our heart. 
and shine the light from heaven on our soul. Lord God, we thank you, oh God, for restoring us on this morning in the name of Jesus. We thank you for restoration on this morning. We thank you for deliverance on this morning. God, we ask you to refill us again. Restore unto us the joy of our salvation. Oh God, give us an extra dose of the Holy Ghost on this morning. Fill us again. Oh God, restore the joy on this morning. Renew strength on this morning. Refill us with the hope of your glory on this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, heal on this morning. Oh God, set free and deliver. But God, most of all, let this be a day of rejoicing. Let this be a day, oh God, that we will write down in the tables of history. Let this be a day, oh God, like no other. Let this be a day, oh God, that we will rise and give your name the praise. Because we'll be able to say that God did it again. You are the God of the turnaround. You are the God that can renew and restore. Restore unto us, oh God, the years that the canker worm have eaten. Restore unto us, oh God, that which the enemy has come to take from us. In the mighty name of Jesus, saying the Lord rebuke him. Saying the Lord rebuke him. Saying the Lord rebuke him. You have no authority. But the authority belongs to the children of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we will lift up our head in the gates of the sanctuary and declare your goodness in the land. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray and we give thanks. And it is so when we seal this prayer by saying in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. That's right. Give God praise on this morning. The Bible says that he inhabits the praises of his people. And if these should hold their peace, the rocks would cry out. Our scripture reading will be coming from Psalms 24, beginning at verse number 7. And it reads, lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. The question was asked, who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, all ye gates, and let the king of glory come in. He is the Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Can we lift him up for a moment? Come on, open up the doors of your heart. Come on, invite the king of glory in. Who is the king of glory? He is the Lord God mighty in battle. Anybody in a fight on this morning? But when you let the king come in, he comes in and he takes charge. Come on and give God the glory. Give God the praise. I, we can't go any further in this service until we give God what's due him on this morning. Come on, we got to change the course of this service. I know that we got problems. We got issues. We got heaviness in our heart. There's death all around us. But who is the king of glory? Come on and lift up your praise on this morning. Come on, open up your mouth and give God praise. Give God glory. Give God praise. Give God glory. Out of your mouth. Open up and let the king come in. Come on, Zion. Come on. Come on, give God the praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Bible says that he inhabits the praises of his people. Welcome to the live broadcast coming from the Sanctuary of Refuge Temple. Turn up the volume and let's have church. The song says that the Lord is blessing me right now. How many can declare that the Lord is blessing you at this very moment right now? Hallelujah.
Good Lord, save me. Right now. Oh, Lord, save me. Right now. Oh, right now. I beg the Lord. I beg the Lord. Right now! 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord again, everybody. Praise the Lord again, everybody. How many worship is for real on this morning? I just tell you to just lift your hands and say, Lord, my worship is for real. Come on, Lord, lift your voice and say, Lord, my worship is for real. Hallelujah. Just put some worship in the atmosphere on this morning. Hallelujah. Get ready for, to, to receive a blessing from God on this morning. He's been good. I've been through too much not to worship him. Hallelujah. All the hell that we have been around all the, for these last couple years, hallelujah, with the coronavirus. I've been through too much not to praise him on this morning. Hallelujah. That's why my worship is for real. So if you see me shouting, if you see me praising him, hallelujah, just know that my worship is for real. Hallelujah. You don't know my story of all the things that I've been through. You can't feel my pain of what I had to go through to get here. Hallelujah. You never understand my praise, so don't try to figure it out. Just know that my worship... It's for real. Hallelujah. That I've been through. All the things that I've been through, you can feel my pain. What I had to go through. What I had to go through to get here. You never understand my praise. You never understand my praise. Don't try to figure it out. Because my worship, because my worship, my worship, my worship is for real. It's for real. Because my worship, because my worship, my worship is for real. You don't know my story. You don't know my story, all the things that I've been through. You can feel my pain, what I had to go through to get here. You never understand? You never understand my prayer. Don't try to figure it out. Because my worship. Because my worship. My worship. My worship. Is for real. Is for real. Just lift your hands and say, because my worship. Hallelujah. Because my worship. My worship. Is, is for real. Come on, let's testify. I've been through too much. I've been through too much, not to worship him. I've been through too much. I've been through too much.
Everybody say hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We come to let you know that my worship, my worship is for real. Say hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. My worship is for real. My worship is for real. Say you're so worthy. You're so worthy. You're so worthy. You're so worthy. My worship is for real. My worship is for real. Say you're so worthy. You're so worthy. You're so worthy. You're so worthy. My worship is. My worship is for real. Say hallelujah. 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 My worship is for real. My worship is for real. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My worship is for real. My worship oh, is for real. Say hallelujah. 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 My worship is for real.
Hallelujah. 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 Our worship today is for real. Merciful and everlasting Father, we thank you for allowing us this day. We thank you, Lord, for how you woke us up this morning, still enclosed in our right minds with the use of our limbs. We praise you, Lord, that we have made our way into the house of the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for traveling mercy that allowed us to travel down I-26 on Main Street. Hey, God, oh, God, I-20, whichever direction we've come to worship you. Lord, we want you to accept the worship because it's for real today. We thank you because you're a keeper. Oh, God, even when we wanted to fall, you kept us in your arms. Lord, we thank you for all of those that have made it into the house of the Lord. And to those that are watching, oh, God, by a live stream, Lord, give them a special anointing on this morning. Oh, God, go through the airways, through ever the system that makes it happen, that it comes into their living rooms, into their kitchens, into their dining rooms. Oh, God, pour out your anointing on them. We have come to tell you thank you today, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We praise and magnify your holy name. You're worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. Oh, God, accept the praise. Accept it as a sweet savior up to your nostrils. Do this in your mighty name and we will praise you. Oh, God, we will open up our mouths and glorify you. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you in your holy name. We ask these blessings in Jesus Christ's name we pray. And may all the people of God that know he is a great God do something to tell him thank you. Come on, you can do more than that. Open up your mouth. Give him the best praise. Praise him for help, life, and strength. Praise him that Corona didn't take over your life. Open up your mouth. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Everybody ought to praise. We magnify the name of the Lord. We thank him for his goodness. We thank him for his mercy. To all of you that are tuning in via live stream, that are looking at us via Facebook live, that are looking at us via YouTube live, and those of you that are picking up your telephones and just simply dialing in to hear, we here at Refuge Temple say greetings to you. Amen. Not only greetings, but welcome to the church in the heart of the city with the people of the city in this heart. We love you and appreciate you. We thank all of you for your great kindness and your love for supporting this ministry throughout this most difficult time in life. We have been suffering and dealing with some stuff, amen, since March of 2020. But I've come to tell you, we're still here. Amen. They thought that we wouldn't make it. They thought that we wouldn't be here, but the God we serve has kept us. Somebody ought to scream in here. There's... There are survivors. There are survivors of the coronavirus. There are survivors that the enemy thought that they were going to take you out and stop you from doing what God had called you to do. But God had purpose in your life. Amen. He had called you for a higher calling that no weapon that is formed against you had the ability to prosper. I don't know about you, but I want to thank God for all of you that are still here. Amen. All of you that are still worshiping God that have not stopped, have not allowed the enemy to take down your praise. As a matter of fact, I know that we're not supposed to yell and jump and scream and holler, but if God has been good to you and a keeper, I dare you just jump up on your feet and tell him thank you.
Open mouth. I feel it. I feel it. I feel a breakthrough. Come on, I Come on, I about you. sometimes we need the music to produce a praise but there are people that are sitting in the midst of this congregation that don't need no music to tell God thank you we magnify him we praise him for his holy works he is a good God. <laughs> Let it sprinkle on you. Let it sprinkle on you. At the most here. <laughs> the Lord has been good. My name has not been numbered amongst the 700,000 that have lost their lives. We pray for those. Turn with us today, just for a few moments, into the second part of a series that we will be talking about for the next week or this week. And that is bound in the book of St. John's chapter number five. Amen. We will begin our verse reading at verse number one and conclude at the end of verse number nine. That is chapter John, according to the book of St. John's chapter number five. Amen. We will begin our reading at verse number one and conclude <clears throat> at the end of verse number five. Amen. It reads to your hearing on this wise, after there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem a sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches as they lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, for the, wait, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down on a certain season into, into the pool and troubled the water. And whosoever then was first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity for thirty and eight years. And when Jesus saw him lie, he knew that he had been now a long time in that case. And he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? And the impotent man answered, and sir, I have no man that when the water is troubled to put me in the pool, 
but while I am going coming, another steppeth down before me. And Jesus said unto him, Arise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. May the Lord have the blessing to the reading of his word and sanctified deep within each and every one of your hearts in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just simply look at somebody down your road, oh man, and if you don't see nobody down your road, look at somebody behind you, in front of you, and just say, God is at work. work. Just say then, God is at work. I have started a series on Wednesday night concerning this, and my topic was walk and continue walking. But this is just a additive to that particular message, and we will deal with the Sabbath on Wednesday. We want you to understand the principles and why there was such a great commotion about this particular event as it was transpiring. Here it is, but when we begin to look at it, we want to talk for a few minutes about chapter five verses, especially verses one through eight, and then we will deal later on this week with number nine. Here it is. What is Jesus's priority? What has he come? What has happened? Why is he coming at this particular time? Amen. We are, where do we find God in the midst of all of the celebration? And the reason why this has become important is that you have to know that there is a Jewish feast. It does not name exactly what it is. I would have to talk to the historians of the Bible that maybe they can give me some particular insight. Even my study does not say a specific name of what it was or what transpired, amen, but there was a feast going on. There was a song, and I want to stop here, that the choir sung, My Worship is For Real. And the reason why that song means so much to me is that I've been through some heartaches and some difficult times. I've been through some rough moments even in my life. But at the end of the day, my worship is for real. Amen. I'm a grown man, but there's something about thinking of the goodness of Jesus that will call tears to run down your face and just tell him thank you for sparing me and keeping me just one more day. Here we are. We're we're not sure what the feast is. We're not sure exactly what transpired in the feast. Amen. We're not sure if it was the particular feast or the tabernacle or the feast of the prims. We're not sure. But that this point does not matter. It is not significant enough for us to worry about or stop our studies to say, wait a minute, let's figure this out. We don't need to take back holes and shovels and go back in our time machines to figure out what feast it was. It doesn't matter, but it was a festival and hence a celebration. Amen. I tell you this, when you celebrate, you celebrate. Amen. There's something about knowing that there's a birthday coming. Amen. Or there's a birth of, I just celebrated my birthday. Amen. And then I Amen. And uh, the my story is amazing that my father, who's almost 87 years old, remembers that day specifically and directly. Amen. Every birthday, he tells me exactly what was going on, how he was sitting on the porch and crying. Amen. Because it was seeming to be difficult for me to be born. Amen. He was telling me of all of the things. And when he heard me cry, what happened? That's a celebration. So I'm thinking that it's a celebration celebration for me, but it's more of a celebration for him because he saw what I came through to get here. Here it is. I am understanding that this feast, this celebration is something that we need to understand. Ah, what is amazing about it on top of that, it is the Sabbath. Amen. The Sabbath or Sunday or whatever you want to call it, which is in the Hebrew tongue, it might have been Saturday, that time that we use to be the Sabbath. Amen. It was a, a particular time or the holy day of the Jews. In Jerusalem, they found themselves at the shepherd's gate or the sheep gate, and there where they find the pool. And we understand that this was amazing that this pool had all of these little steps, little uh, uh, things that were surrounding it that stood out, that there were crowds and crowds of people, amen, that were impotent and sick and withered and all of the other diseases that were there, but they had heard a story, amen, when 
you begin to read it in chapter three and chapter five and get to verse number three, you will find yourself, you will hear them talking about all of the withered and hands and stuff that was there. But while they're looking to the, the early manuscripts do not tell us exactly or explain the, the invalids or the situations and the things that are going on. But when they later write the scriptures and they understand the manuscript in chapter four, excuse me, in verse four, you understand the reason why there were so many people that were there. Amen. You look at it and you read it for it says, for the angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the waters. And whosoever the first after the troubling of the water stepped in and was made whole from whatever disease they had. Amen. Here it is. This is amazing because they knew that during this particular time, amen, if they could get to the water and get into it first, that whatever sickness they had would be removed. So people were coming from all shape sizes and countries trying to find healing for themselves. Amen. Y'all know what I'm talking about. If I set a pool up right here and right now and told you the first 10 folks that got in it, amen, would be delivered from their arthritis, their, car, their high blood pressure. You would be jumping from your seat amen into the pool to get deliverance because god was doing something miraculous at this time and in this season here it is they're at the shepherd's gate and they find themselves they found themselves according to the explanation of people being there that the angel would come down and stir up the water amen sometimes we look for a stirring up we look for god to do something that he normally hasn't done amen and you ought to look back at the last 18 to 19 months of where we're going through, God has been stirring up some stuff. Yeah. Amen. Oh, somebody ought to say amen to that. Yeah. Amen. You got to give God glory because he knows he is the all wise and all learning God. He understands and sees all kind of things and he operates at his own discretion. Amen. Here it is. He's doing some stuff that only he can do. Amen. And we understand that they were waiting to be the first in line. Amen. To get into the pool. Here it is that when we understand it, we find that this pool is surrounded by people that find themselves struggling and looking for something. People waiting to find a miracle. They're waiting for the power of God to operate as never before. People are waiting in great numbers, not only for just a day, but for years. Amen. They have seen someone the year before, amen, that stepped in that was withered and crippled, but when they came out, they had their arms and legs operating as never before. Amen. Everybody they accepted that this was something that was moved by the hand of God, that God was doing, they was ready, they were waiting, people were waiting in great numbers just for one miracle. Amen. Not a multitude of them, but just one miracle. They could have changed their lives. When a miracle happens to you, it changes your life. Amen. If you have experienced what God has done, you are a believer at that point. Amen. I know he's a healer because he healed me. I know what the doctors said. I know how they declared that I would be sick from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet, that I would never recover. But God breathed on me. Amen. Changed my life. Now you can't take that testimony away from me. He's a healer. Amen. If you know he's a healer, let's look down your row and say, you can't stop me from believing he's a healer. Uh, he's a healer. He's a way maker. He's a heart fixer. He's a mind regulator. Oh, God, he's an awesome God. Amen. Here it is. We understand all of the great things that he does. Amen. Here they are. Actually, in the sense, this miracle is the turning point of Jesus' ministry. Amen. This miracle that is transpiring, that he comes, amen, with his disciples walking into the gate. And the first thing he sees is this man, amen, that has been there. Amen. And the spirit tells him, God tells him and tells him that he has been there for 38 years. Could you imagine waiting for something for 38 years? Amen. For 38 long years. 
38 years. Some of you haven't even lived 38 years. And those of us that have can't remember 38 years. Here it is, 38 years. He's been waiting for this turnaround, for this moment. Amen, this thing. Here it is, Jesus understands this. You see that this miracles, amen, has begun to work. And not only does it begin to work, amen, but I need to tell you that sometimes when you get blessed, everybody ain't going to be happy for you. Oh man, when you get a miracle, everybody's not going to be excited that you've gotten that miracle. Amen. They're not going to be excited. They're not going to support it. Here it is that Jesus finds himself healing this man. Amen. Telling him to get up and walk. He speaks a word to him. He does not lay his hands on him. He just tells him to get up. Amen. Take up your bed and walk. And in this process, there seems to be a power problem. Here it is. You see that the miracle, amen, does not only just heal the man, but it opens up the door for the bloodhounds to attack and to track Jesus. Amen. It tells them, mother, brother, that there's a story that's going on. That when he heals them, the priest and the high priest and all of those individuals that found themselves calling themselves religious, amen, are upset that he uses the Sabbath, amen, in order to create this day. Amen. They never let up on him after he calls himself and expresses his deity like he had never expressed it before. They find themselves saying, this man is a blasphemer. He's talking about God in a way that he should never open his mouth to say. Here it is, he's doing all kind of things to express the stuff that he's saying. And here they are, all of the leaders and the followers and those that call themselves Sadducees and Pharisees. They find themselves upset because he's healing and he's healing on the Sabbath. It is important that you understand that the Sabbath was not a day for anything. Amen. You couldn't go and seek medical help unless it was an emergency beyond measure. Amen. They could not do anything. There was no iron and no cooking, no cleaning, all of those things that we normally do. It was set aside specifically and directly. So for Jesus to come and heal on that day, amen, they were not accepted of it. They were not religious. They were too religious to the point that they chose not to do it. Amen. They would never cause them to shine. Here it is because he's done it now. Their anger begins to grow and grow. Amen. It grows to the point that they never let up on him. They've made up in their mind that they got to get rid of him. Amen. It was that turn of events, that turn of events, so that you can understand the majority or the certain of turning of events. Amen. Here they are when we find ourselves trying to grow as African Americans and we have Dr. King and he's fighting for our rights. He's fighting for us to have freedom. Amen. They have the boycotts. They're busing boycotts. They're doing all of those things. Amen. To bring awareness to what they're dealing with. Amen. But I'm told that somewhere along the line, Amen. The marches and all of those things have began to stall. Amen. We're not going forward. It seems that we were fighting directly to come, but there was something that was in mind. Amen. There was a group of young people that they put on the front lines. Amen. Down in Alabama. And as they began to open up their mouths and march for freedom. Amen. It was them that bull Connors began to turn their dogs and their horses and everything loose on them. And the world saw what these young people were going through. They saw the attacks on our young people. I come to share you, the enemy is attacking our young people today. Amen. They're causing them to stutter and fall along the wayside. But I know that there's some praying folk up in here that has covered them with the blood. <laughs> When these young people saw what was, when the world saw what was going on, the motivation of the race that was trying to go on began to operate as never before. Here it is. I want you to know that they had made up in their mind that they were going to kill Jesus. They simply, amen, knew that they needed to destroy him. Amen. Here it is. They find themselves in a position where they were trying to captivate them and destroy everything that he had begun to do. But I've come to share with you. They didn't know that they were operating in the plan. 
Amen. Jesus did not come to stay here. Amen. It was not his mindset to set up his kingdom right then. Amen. But he had made a mind up to bring us back into the fold. Amen. What sin had pulled us out. Amen. He knew that he had to suffer for Christ. Amen. He knew that he had to suffer for us. Amen. He finds himself hanging on the cross, dying for our sins. He knew what he had to come and do. Here it is. I have come to share with you how wonderful he is. Amen. How grateful he is and how altogether lovely he is. I am so grateful for the miracles that he's worked. Amen. I've come to share with you all the wonderful things that he's done. He finds himself, amen, telling the man to get up and walk. And the reason why he says, because he wants them to know that there's a miracle coming. Amen. They're waiting for that miracle. They're waiting for the miracle of God to help them to under the chance to move from where they are. Here it is, comes someone, Lord Jesus. We find ourselves shunning, oh God, the festivals that was going on. Amen. They stop worrying about the party that's transpiring. He's not being seen among the Jewish leaders, and he doesn't understand that he's not someone that beside the altar that's praying there just alone. Amen. Jesus is not among the sick, but yet he feels what they're going through. Amen. He understands disease. Amen. He understands what's transpiring, but he's among the people that are helpless. Amen. He's among those that are looking for someone to help them. Amen. He finds himself walking throughout the crowd. Amen. There has been certainly growing and understanding that he's about to move like he's never moved before. Amen. I've come to share with you that God is at work. Amen. The reason why I know he's at work because every time I get on my knees to pray, I feel a warm sensation. Amen. That runs over my body and tells me I'm here. Amen. And I've come to bless your going in and your coming out. Amen. I want you to know that while they were stuttering and going through the moments, amen, he's here to bless them. Uh, Jesus is not accepted by everybody. Amen. Nobody is always on his side and begging for him uh, to be the man, if you please. They made up in their mind that we're going to get rid of him uh, and we're going to destroy everything that he has. I've come to give you a word that some of us are dealing with some difficult stuff. Amen. Some of us are struggling with our life experiences where the enemy has tried to stop our praise. Amen. And stop us for who we are. We've been waiting for 38 years for a miracle to come in our lives. We've been waiting for our children to be delivered and to be set free. But I've come to give you a word. If you wait on the Lord just a little bit longer, the God I serve will open up the door. He will move like never before. I know it's been 18 months uh, and we're still walking around with a mask uh, we're still using hand sanitizer uh, amen we're still doing all of the other stuff uh, we've been waiting for almost two years uh, and saying lord when will this be over uh, but i've come with something to tell you uh, i heard a story uh, and i shared it with you uh, the other day uh, when i was in a terrible scenario uh, amen and found that there was no help for me uh, unless the God I serve stepped in uh, and moved like never before. Uh, I was praying, I uh, share, uh, I was crying, uh, I was fasting, uh, I was getting my prayer team together, uh, and I was saying, Lord, who uh, in my life move uh, this burden from me? Uh, amen. I heard uh, where the story said, My grief is sufficient.
position. Uh, but it seemed like it wasn't enough. Uh, the more I cried, uh, the more I got broken down. Uh, and the enemy started working with my mind uh, and telling me, you're never coming out. Uh, you're never going to be delivered. Uh, this is your plight uh, for the rest of your life. Uh, you're going to have to deal with it. Uh, but I prayed uh, and I read my word. Uh, see, there's not enough just to pray, uh, but you got to read your word uh, and hear him say, for I reckon uh, that the suffering of this present time uh, is not worthy uh, to be where glory shall be revealed in us. Uh, I've come to a point that while I was there, uh, I kept crying unto the Lord. Uh, Lord, I need some help. Uh, I need some deliverance. Uh, I need to be brought out of the sins uh, that I created of my own. Uh, I need you, God, to move uh, in my life. I need a fresh anointing. Uh, I need you to walk in me. Uh, I need you to talk. Somebody ought to hear it. Uh, I'm praying your prayer. Uh, Lord, move in my life. Uh, oh, God, take away the thoughts uh, that are kind to cause me uh, to think about destroying my body. Uh, Lord, help me, Jesus, uh, because the spirit of depression uh, is taking over me. Uh, but, Lord, I need your help. Uh, I need you to move uh, like you've never moved before. Uh, I need you to come in my life uh, and bless my going in uh, and bless my coming out. Uh, and while I prayed, uh, amen, while I was crying out, Josh, uh, something began to happen. Uh, amen. I felt the move of God uh, out of my belly uh, began to flow rivers uh, of living water. Uh, as I began to pray, uh, the tongues came up. Uh, amen. And began to speak uh, like it never spoke before. Uh, and I heard the Lord uh, when he said, what will you do uh, while you're waiting? Uh, and I had to make up in my mind uh, that while I'm waiting uh, for you to move, uh, I think I open up my mouth uh, and praise the name of the Lord. Uh, I'll tell somebody uh, he's a way maker. Uh, he's a heart fixer uh, and a mind regulator. Uh, I tell you, uh, yes, I've been struggling uh, and yes, I've been straining, uh, but I know how to praise him. Uh, I know how to share uh, the goodness of the Lord. Uh, I know that while I got up, uh, I dusted myself off uh, and I tell everyone uh, he's a keeper uh, if you repent of your sins uh, he'll come in your life uh, is there a believer in here uh, is there somebody uh, that knows he's able uh, I heard uh, that he's at work uh, all the trials and tribulations uh, that we're going through uh, are just for a moment. Uh, it's your season now. Uh, you've been waiting uh, and now it's God's time uh, to show up in your life. Uh, I need somebody uh, to open up their mouths uh, and tell them I know you're at work. Uh, I feel you uh, way down in my soul. Uh, I feel you uh, in my mind uh, that no weapon uh, that can stop me now. Uh, I want to praise him uh, for being good, uh, for being all together lovely. Uh, I come to share with you. Uh, they're trying to stop you, uh, but don't you dare uh, give up now. Uh, we're too close uh, to victory. Uh, I just need a praiser. Uh, I just need a worshiper. Uh, I just need somebody uh, that knows how to magnify Time. Open up your mouth. Throw up your hands. Tell them thank you for my trials, for my tribulation, because I know victory. I know victory is on the way. Can I say something? Can I say something? How many of you need a miracle? 
I'm not talking about no oatmeal miracle. I'm talking about a real miracle. How about she cats? How about we? Hey Amen. I'm talking about something that's going to change your life. When a miracle comes to you, it changes your way of thinking. Somebody ought to scream in here. You can no longer act the way you used to act because a miracle changes you. Anybody in here has the Lord taken off of their deathbed? You mean it's just three of us in here? Four of us that the enemy tried to kill? <laughs> now, I I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. And the way you're going to know about it is because you're in church today. All of you got your cell phones pointed at me. Turn them off. Praise the Lord and greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who Lord and greetings in the name.